Good morning. This is Alex Horton again with learning C-sharp fundamentals from scratch. Uh, as always with the disclaimer, I am not the greatest developer in the world, uh, but I'm not the worst developer in the world either. So anything that you hear from me is just coming from one man's perspective. There's more bright, there's brighter and more well-versed individuals out there than I am. I don't know everything. My goal is to get you jump started and interested in what I'm speaking of today. Um, we are going to be talking a bit about source control. So we're not going to come, we're not going to concentrate so much on source code today. Um, but we are going to talk about some differences in version control, <clears throat> which is what you'll, you're going to need if you're going to ever going to be a great developer. Um, and as always, uh, this is no substitute for formal learning. Uh, it, it, a lot of the things that you are going to hear today, you can learn on your own. But again, there is no substitute for a formal learning environment where you can ask questions and jot notes down and stuff like that. So um, and lastly, um, if you are a developer and you see what I'm doing, if I'm doing something wrong or incorrect, uh, please cor uh, correct me in the comments below. Um, please do not. Um, we take constructive criticism here. We don't take a critical criticism here. And so we want to be constructive. We want to help each other out. As always, we are a community and we're trying to learn from one another. So um, I started these vlog series as a way to keep my skill set fresh and to jumpstart my mind. So this is therapeutic to me as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to talk about source control today. <clears throat> source and revision control, what is it? Well, source control is a way, uh, or source of revision control is a way to uh, keep your, your code uh, optimized and organized. But before we get to that, Let's talk a bit about some terms that are thrown around uh, quite a bit that you may hear developers use. Um, the first one that you'll hear is source or source code. What is source code? Well, source code is any pre-compiled or any um, human readable code, uh, collection of code that's readable by you as a human being. Um, in our previous videos, we've seen a lot of source code that we've run. Um, it's the stuff where you type into your uh, software package or your um, IDE. Um, and it's something that you can read. So an example of that is C sharp, right? And any C sharp code that you develop, that is called source code. And then what happens is if you compile it, um, it's turned into what's called object code or binary code. And that is source code that is uh, translated so that the computer can understand what you're trying to tell it to do. Um, you write source code as a developer. You compile that source code in C sharp. And then that code is given to the machine as an executable or a DLL or whatever so that it can understand what instructions you're giving it. <clears throat> so that's the difference between source and object code. And a repository is a place where a bunch of code, source code, or even binary code, sorry, it's like, it's just turned 715 in the morning here, so I'm still waking up. <clears throat> um, source code is archived in an organized way or binary code is organized in is organized or archived in an organized way. Uh, that's a repository. Now a repository can be used for anything other than code too. Um, depends on what software you use. So that's what those three terms means. You'll hear those terms kind of thrown around. I kind of bash your eyes in a little bit myself, but so that's what those mean. So let's talk about what is source and revision control. <clears throat> well, revision control tracks changes to anything that you put in there into your repository. So you've got a repository. So think of a repository as just a big store and you put stuff into that store or like a let's use a library as an example. A library is a great example of this. 
So if you go to the public library and you check out a book, okay, you can control as the library who can check out books, when they've checked out the book, oh, uh, what time they checked out the book, um, and you can control when the book is returned. Okay, so think of a repository like a library, basically. And when people put stuff in there, once it's in there, it's in there. But you can track who's making changes to it, what the change was, why was there a change made, uh, what time was the change made, those kind of things. That's what revision control gives you. <clears throat> and it's very important as a developer because when you are paid to do a task, um, quite often your clients um, who ask you to do the task, <clears throat> they can only see the front facing part of the task. They want to change and they want it at this time. Okay. But when you have a multitude of different individuals that are developing as a team, not the, the you know, the same person may not work on the same piece of code every time. And so you need revision control to help you track who's making changes. Why was there a change made? Because it also tracks, um, um, it, it protects you as a, as a company from unwanted change. Okay. So that's what revision control does for you. <clears throat> now what's source control? Well, source control is specifically used for source code control. It gives you revision control, but it also uses branching and merging. So that way you can track changes, but you can also manage uh, uh, your code base to say, okay, once I put my book into the library, um, if I want to add to that book, or if I have three people that are writing the same on the same book, I can make sure that I understand who's writing chapter one, who's writing chapter four, and then we can control when chapter one and chapter four are added to the book. Okay, and I can see who wrote those chapters in the book. Source control works very similar to this, where is I, if I'm writing a piece of code and I've got a friend who's writing a piece of code and I've got another individual who's writing a piece of code and we're all working off of the same code base or a bit of source control or, or source code, but we're working on tasks that are due at different times. I can, we can, as source control gives you the ability to merge those changes up into your main code base to go ahead and track and control when changes go out the door. And it also gives the ability for you to review those changes as well and um, uh, control when those changes go out the door, will these changes work, how are these changes gonna impact us? That's what source control gives you. Inversion control is kind of, you know, um, the same thing. Uh, it's very similar to revision and source control. It's just kind of a generic term that's kind of thrown out there. Um, it, it manages binary or source files. It also manages other documentation for version control. Microsoft Word has a version control. You can track who made what changes to a particular document, okay? Um, some some very <clears throat> common um, con source control or for source revision control software that you hear about out there as a developer is Git. Uh, Git is a very widely used um, source revision control package. Um, Azure DevOps. I never can say that right. Azure DevOps. I say Azure. I say it, it doesn't matter or t uh, Team Foundation Server, TFS. Um, DevOps is a way, is the Microsoft version of, of uh, source control. Um, I'll talk about them in a minute. Uh, I have a funny story about that. Um, there's Apache Subversion or SVN, um, which is a software package um, and a server-based package that you can use. There's an anti uh, a deprecated one. I was going to say antiquated. It is antiquated. A deprecated one called v Microsoft Visual Source Safe. Um, it was one that was very early on used by Microsoft. Um, they no longer support it, but it's just an example. 
And of course, there's Bitbucket, which is Atlant Atlant Atlassian, I think you said that way. Um, they're the people that use, uh, that, that develop Jira. So they have their own Git version. It uses Git, in Bitbucket uses Git as a, as a control uh, package. Um, but it also links to their, uh, uh, to their system. Now, what is the, um, what is the big deal about these, these five, right? <clears throat> well, you can scratch source safe off right away because nobody uses it anymore. If it's still used, it's going to be used by folks who haven't made that transition. It's very, very, I mean, it's, it, it's, it has been used for a while. I haven't used it in a long, long time. Git is one that's extremely popular because it's open source. It's free, right? Everybody uses Git. Now there's pros and cons to that. Git is, is, is free. So it's very widely used out there by a lot of different organizations and developers um, right away. <clears throat> and so um, because of that, um, everybody knows how to use it. You know, it, there's, there's tons of different resources out there that help you learn how to use Git as a source and revision control package. Um, the con to that, however, is it's free. <laughs> and because of that, there's a multitude of different places that offer the same thing. So it gives you a wider choice. Um, but because it's free, um, some people consider it to be extremely buggy, uh, vulnerable to attack. Um, I have my own personal story that I'll tell you about here in a minute. Uh, and so, um, so th there's that. Uh, DevOps is something that um, it is the Microsoft version of source control. It's cloud-based. Um, and Git, let me, let me go back. Git is, well, Git, the software itself isn't cloud-based, but it can, it can be cloud-based. So I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. GitHub is what I'm going to be referring to early uh, later on. Uh, but Azure DevOps is also a cloud, that's Microsoft's cloud-based software package or solution, I should say, I'll use the word solution, uh, for version controlling, and it gives you a multitude of different things. And I'll sh probably log into my DevOps account. Uh, I have a personal DevOps account that um, I'll show you. Um, it's fairly cheap. Um, you can get a you can get a DevOps account for less than 20 bucks, 15, 20 bucks a month, I think, something like that. Um, but there's obviously there's a cost to it. Um, uh, subversion is the Apache uh, version of this and it too you can also go there and download that one um, the the plus side of it is it is it, it it is too something that you can grab for free the downside of it is that you have to have additional hardware um, in place um, and again, it's probably, that's probably changed because I haven't used SVN in, in a very long time again. Um, but the last time I used it, you had to um, have a server that was dedicated to SVN because everything ran locally to your uh, organization. Uh, like I said, uh, source safe is no longer used, so we're not gonna cover that. And then of course there's Bitbucket, uh, again, which is the Atlassian a software. The pros to that is that if you are in an organization <clears throat> and you use uh, task tracking software like a Jira, Atlassian, they are the makers of Jira. And so you can track changes uh, with Jira as well, and it can go right into your Bitbucket account. The drawback of that, however, is obviously uh, it's always going to be cost related. So let's look at a little bit here. Um, what we can do is we will actually sign up for a couple of these different accounts here. So let's go ahead and I've gone ahead and I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about GitHub 
and Bitbucket. <clears throat> um, and I'll show you my DevOps account as well in a minute here. And so, Alex Jones is a little look happy today, doesn't he? Um, so we'll talk about GitHub first. GitHub <clears throat> is a place in, let me sign out of my regular account here. GitHub, let me tell you my personal story with GitHub. So <clears throat> I worked for a company that didn't have um, the best software version control system, a very large company. And uh, what happened was as a developer, I was used to using some sort of source control. And I had developed some software um, solutions for this particular company and they didn't have a GitHub account and they didn't have a Git repository where source code could be stored. Um, they had a shared server uh, that they stored their information on and people were always messing it up. It was always down or people were deleting records out of there or deleting stuff out of there, or files out of there. And as a dev, that is extremely frustrating. And so I signed up for my own personal GitHub account and I put my code out there. Well, unbeknownst to me, um, that was against company policy. Um, they considered that particular code to be something that was proprietary to them as soon as I had developed it. And so we had to part ways, <clears throat> unfortunately. However, my GitHub account was also, I, I, I was telling this to a coworker yesterday, uh, the GitHub account that was the, um, the, the method of my execution at one place was also the savior that allowed me to be the Phoenix that rose from the ashes at another place. Because when you develop software in the cloud, like on a GitHub or on a Bitbucket, you can, you can put that on your resume and you can show people that, hey, I'm not just saying that I know how to code, I've got proof that I know how to code. And so I had put my, my GitHub account, uh, re my GitHub repository location on my um, resume. And when I went in for an interview, um, what happened was one of the guys who ended up being my manager, real cool cat, a, the first thing he asked me, he said, well, I see on your GitHub account. And I was like, oh yes, I'm so happy that you just said that to me. Because it let me know that I was being uh, judged, not just on my resume, but also they took the time out to look and see, hey, here's a guy who knows, actually he's got some experience in doing what he says he does. And it actually ended up getting me the job. So uh, GitHub is a great, so just be very careful. So here's my caveat to that. My intentions were very pure, but my method was flawed and that cost me personally. But if you're careful about what you put out there on GitHub, it can help you. And you can also have other people, uh, you can share that code with other people. <clears throat> and then you can, what you can do is you can uh, get people's input on your work. <clears throat> excuse me, get people's input on your work and that makes you a much better developer. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and sign into a GitHub account here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to sign up for a GitHub account here. So I'll show you how easy this is. So I'm going to create a, a username. Um, let's see here. Okay. I'm gonna create a new username and this is just gonna be, and I can delete this account. So I'll delete this account once it's done. So we're gonna put this as, um, Alex teacher C sharp. Actually, let's make it easier than that. Yeah, I knew that one. Was. So this is that's there's one of the drawbacks of using like a GitHub. Everybody uses it, so you got to come up with something unique. 
So let's just do this. Um, I'll put Alex Horton. That's the year I graduated high school. And I'll put an AOL address in there. And obviously that's already taken, so. Um, yeah, there we go. Put a password in there. You don't have to sign up for the preferences. I have to verify that I'm a real person. So let's let's put the the dude up there. I got it in six to eight seconds. Wow. Okay. Now you have to select a plan because um, you can do the the free plan, which gives you a ton of stuff. And that's one of the good things about GitHub, right? Is that you know you can you can use this and look at what you're getting here I mean you know you're you're getting all of this information here <clears throat> but if you use pro tools you get a gig and then you get action minutes and you know different things um, private wikis and github accounts and stuff like that it's only seven bucks a month it's really cheap right but I'm gonna do the free because we're learning here and then it says hey you've done this and blah 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 how much experience do you have a lot and we're going to learn git and github and we're gonna do this and do this something like that i'm not even gonna answer to that complete the setup and then usually it tells you to verify your email account <clears throat> and so i I'm on my phone and I'm verifying my email address here now. <clears throat> and da, 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 da. let me pause this. Okay, so I you have to sign in, and I wasn't going to take you guys through all of that. Uh, you have to sign in after you get the verification email from GitHub. And that's usually part for the course. They want to make sure that somebody's not signing up for, you know, something else. So here we go. Um, and again, like I said, I'm going to delete this after I get done with it, but we're going to just step through this. <clears throat> so what you see here is uh, my personal profile page here, my new GitHub account here. Uh, one of the things that you'll want to do is uh, for this particular tutorial is uncheck this box here about keeping email private addresses private and there's a reason why when you're using visual studio if you have that checked it won't let you merge changes up into your repository into your repository and stuff so um <clears throat> so then you can actually add other email addresses and all that kind of stuff i won't go into all that so now you've got your github account you can go to your profile and you can see you don't have any repositories yet and all that kind of stuff we'll create one here in a minute like this right so the next thing is that you're going to want to do uh, let's let's sign into let's create a bitbucket account too okay and so i'm going to create another bitbucket account I'm going to use the one I was going to use here. Select all images with crosswalks. <clears throat> well, there's one there. Nope. That's not a crosswalk. There's a crosswalk. There's a crosswalk. There's a crosswalk. There's a crosswalk. Wow. I failed. Okay, here's a bridge, here's a bridge, there's a bridge, Are there any other bridges anywhere? There. Okay. So now, again, I've got to go over to my inbox and my email, and then I've got to verify my email address by clicking on a link. 
and I'm doing this on my phone over here off screen so y'all can't see that and so now if I just go to I just go to log in nope I'm not gonna use that one password <clears throat> so here Yes, that's fine. And let's go back to Bitbucket because this is Atlassian here. Bitbucket. I should still be signed in. So you'll have a dashboard here. So again, it's very similar to GitHub where it talks about, you know, you've got a main page here. You can see your repositories if you have any, any projects that you're working on, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, this Bitbucket is just a different way to look at this. Um, it's organized differently. Um, and it's more organized for those individuals that use uh, the products that Atlassian develops, like Jira and others, and Confluence and others. Uh, GitHub isn't that way. It doesn't, you know, it's just a visual representation of using Git and, and Git projects and that kind of stuff, okay? So <clears throat> we've got two different ways to go ahead and get information in there all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to connect to our accounts so you'll see here that I have a repository over here um, <clears throat> yours won't look like mine but I've got a, repo a repository over here for my main source code for uh, DevOps here and if I click on that it's been a while since I've been in there if I click on that you'll see that I've got all of my projects that I had here right um, here is a here's one here that if I double click on the solution it pops up that solution and you'll see the little locks now we're using visual studio and i don't know if you guys can see that because it's really small probably um but we'll, we'll talk about what these little locks mean and stuff like that here in a minute so let's let's just go back let's go back to our team explorer we're going to sign out we're going to sign out of that uh, no we're not we're going to leave that alone okay so we're going to we're going to sign up to our GitHub account. Before you can do that, what you got to do is in Visual Studio, you want to go to Manage Extensions, and this little extension box pops up, right? <clears throat> and make sure Online is selected over here, and you'll want to get the GitHub extension for Visual Studio. And you'll also want to get the Bitbucket one too. And I've already downloaded the GitHub one, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you download an extension. <clears throat> so this is the Visual Studio Bitbucket extension. You click download. And I don't know why mine does this, but it looks like it's not doing anything, but just let it stay there for a minute or two. It'll download it. And then at the bottom here, what'll happen is once it's done downloading this, you'll get this little yellow pop-up here that says your changes will be scheduled, the modifications will begin when all Visual Studio windows are closed. After you've downloaded the Bitbucket and the GitHub extensions, close this <clears throat> and exit out of Visual Studio and a little box will pop up that says, hey, I'm installing. 
wow, that was loud. <laughs> and then um, you click on your, you know, your access control box there. It'll say, do you want to install these, modify your Visual Studio, say modify. Make sure you don't have it running. <clears throat> It'll modify it. And what it's doing in the background is it is adding the extension, which will allow your Visual Studio IDE to communicate with your Bitbucket and your GitHub accounts. So then that way you can create repositories and check in stuff. Everything can be done via Visual Studio. Or almost everything can be done via Visual Studio. Okay. That's what that's doing for you in the background. So we're going to let that work and then we'll come back. Okay. So now once everything's installed, you get this nice little, little uh, you know, pop up here. You can close that and then you can relaunch your Visual Studio. And it'll pop up here. Keep this window up because we're going to go over that in a minute here too. <clears throat> I've got two monitors so I can drag stuff around. So, Okay. Now, <clears throat> when you relaunch your Visual Studio, um, and you'll notice that the DevOps for me pops up right away. I mean, come on. It's Microsoft. Of course it's going to do that, <laughs> right? Okay, so now when you click on the little uh, plug here, you'll notice that I've got a GitHub and a Bitbucket extension. Okay, let's get signed into those both. So you click sign in, a little box pops up. You can go to your GitHub account. Get signed in. And boom, you've got a new GitHub account. And yours may not look like this. I think, let me sign out. I think I signed into the wrong, wrong one here. Um, let's see, was that the right one? No, I keep signing into the one that I already have. the right one <laughs> okay <laughs> um let me check my pro this is why i'm doing this let me check my profile here what uh what do i have here Yeah, that's what I used. Oh, it's doing that. It's kind of weird. So, let me sign up one more time and try signing in. I think maybe one of the reasons why it's doing that is because I've got stuff over there already. I'm not sure. And then I'll, we'll, so we'll, we'll just go ahead and get logged into the Bitbucket one too. You click that and you say, mm, mm, mm. Oh, uh -oh. well now, let's make sure we've got the, got the stuff here. Oh, for crying out loud. Let's go back over to Bitbucket. Click on my profile. 
Why am I getting a 404 there? That link has no power here. Huh. What? Come on, yo. Let me log out. Try to get logged back in here. That's why. No, that's right. Ah. Well, it looks like we weren't quite done doing what we needed to do. Sign up for Bitbucket Cloud. Yeah, I didn't do this part. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Um, close that. So I'm going to make a username for Bitbucket Cloud. And what this is doing, it's giving me a, a um, it's giving me a, a section of Bitbucket that I can use for my personal use. So I'm gonna call it Alex Hort Dog 95. Ugh. <laughs> there. And then it asks you some personal questions. You know, I know enough get to get things done. That's me. I'm a developer. Um, we're gonna use this for learning Git. Submit that. There we go. Now I should be able to come back over here and say, "Here we go." Now I'm connected the way I need to be. So I've got my GitHub, my Bitbucket, obviously my DevOps. You'll see this over here it says local Git repositories. <clears throat> those are those are repositories that I've created locally. Now, here's the difference between Git and Visual Studio's DevOps. When you create a Git repository. You first create that repository local to your machine first. Then the repository is, is committed to the cloud repository on either GitHub or Bitbucket. Okay. So code starts on your on a machine somewhere. It's uploaded to the Bitbucket or to your to the I'll just say your repository. It's uploaded to the repository where it then becomes the base source code. It's the first version of that source code, okay? It's like the, the holy grail at that point, okay? At that point, all changes should be tracked. Any change to that code base is gonna be tracked, okay? Now, let's go ahead <clears throat> and see what that kind of looks like. So over here, you'll see there's, we don't have any repositories. Oh, what is this? My gosh. What's going on there? I don't, it, it yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> you can create your own repository over here. And let's go back over to the GitHub one here. And you notice it says that there's no public repositories anywhere, right? So we don't have any repositories yet. So, and, and over here on this GitHub account, I don't know why that says that, but, um, I don't know it says that over there. It's like it's cached or something like that. <clears throat> but if I click clone, it you know it says that there's no repositories over there. That's the that figures. Um let's so let's create a couple of repositories on both Bitbucket and GitHub. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new repository on GitHub. We'll call it test. 
repo uh, test git repo. Okay, we'll make it public so anybody can see it. And we are creating a new git repo on git hub. Um, so we're creating basically a storehouse. We don't have anything in the storehouse yet. Okay. But we're going to create a new storehouse for, for our code. This readme, what this is, is it's basically a, an informational file that will show up when a person gets into your repository that tells you what the repository is for, what's the purpose of it, anything like that. Um, change notes, that kind of stuff. And then this licensing um, is just if you have a public license or if you're not using license code, don't worry about that. And then finally, this get ignore. Um, you can do that if you're going to use like Visual Studio or like so there's a get ignore for Visual Studio code and stuff like that. I never mess with that. Um, and I always just leave this alone. So click create repository. And now we've got a test repo over here. So if you go back over to your Visual Studio, if you're signed in, if I click clone, uh, we've got our new test repo here. There's no code in there so that you can't clone anything. Okay. <clears throat> now let's do the same thing over on Bitbucket. I'm going to create a repository. Let's call it test Bitbucket git repo. Okay. There's a readme there, obviously. We're going to use git. And there's some advanced settings that you can use there. Um, we're not going to worry about those yet. We're just creating a new repository. And boom, we've got a new repository. So let's do the same thing over here. Say clone. And you'll see that there's a test git bb repo over there. There's nothing in it, right? <clears throat> so let's put some so let's put some code in there. And obviously, like I was saying in, in, the, in the PowerPoint presentation earlier, you see that everything is tracked in there. See this? No, I'm going to set no actions up. It shows that, hey, I'm tracking what's going on here. You can view history at this point. Any changes? details who's made what changes and stuff like that you know and so um <clears throat> it, it again that it, it just gives you a really great way to track to see who's making what changes what's going on that kind of stuff right Are there any builds and so um you can, that's what, that's the power of control, uh, source control and version control and, and revision control is you can track to see who's making what changes and stuff. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and we're going to, and there's some, there's some demo information on here and there's some, um, uh, steps on how to make repositories and files and stuff like that. And it's on both of them as well. Obviously it says test get repo in, in my readme over there. Um, there's guides all over the place. That's the beauty of Git is that there's a ton of guides out there and you don't have to figure stuff out on your own, right? It shows you who's contributing. There's me, right? It'll show commits, right? That kind of stuff. So you can track all this stuff, right? <clears throat> now let's make some code and then let's go ahead and get, um, we're going to make some code and we're going to get it in there. So you can do this one or two ways. Okay. We're going to do the easy way first. So let's create a new solution. 
new project. And we're just going to create a really quick Hello World app here. Right. Say create. Uh oh, there's already Hello World there. Well, let's put this on a different place here. Let's browse that and see if there's a Hello World out there. It probably already is. Yep, there's a ton of them out there. We'll call it Hello Git instead. Git. Create it. <clears throat> now, what's going to happen is if I go to my Solution Explorer, if I go up into the tools and options and go down to source control, it says Team Foundation Server was the plugin that I used for this. which is not what I want. So I'm gonna change the source control on this particular solution. <laughs> and it's gonna tell me, I've gotta restart my stuff here, I believe, here in a minute. And then you can add it to source control. And what it does is it creates a local Git repository for you. Get out of there. So this repository is local to my machine. If I click on the show folder view, it shows me where, there's where my code is at. It's on my B code repository, hello Git, right there, okay? That's in the Solution Explorer. Let me go back to my um, the other view. There. Now. Once you add it, once you put that Git source control on there and it creates a local repository for you, you're going to see something happen over here. Now, <clears throat> man, I wish you guys could see that. Over here, what you're going to see are some little locks. And I say we're going to talk about this later. So if you hover over it, see it says check in. <clears throat> that means that this solution is now under source control of some sort okay it means that you have to check in and check out changes and anything that you make a change to is going to be noted that a file has made a change so i'm going to make a change i'm going to put an empty line in there and you notice that this program.cs file changed from a lock to a check mark that means that this particular file has changed from the original version that was over here on my local Git repository. So <clears throat> let's type something in there. We're going to type console right line. Hello, Git. And let's put a just comment line in there too. All right, save it. No big deal. We we're not even compile this. So what we what we've done now is we've made a change to an original repository piece of code. Okay. So now what we're going to do, if you go over this team explore tab over there and you click changes, you notice that this one file has changed from the time that I originally made a change, uh, originally created my repository. So I'm gonna say added a comment line and a line of code. 
and you'll notice <clears throat> we'll talk about branching in another video but you'll notice that it says that you can commit your changes so i'm going to say commit all changes boom there we go and so our solution explorer shows that now we're back locked up and all of our code is checked in so now if i go back over here to the team explorer and i click sync it'll say where do you want to put this stuff to okay now i can put this stuff into bitbucket i can choose the repository name over here i can do the same thing over here on devops and github so we'll publish this to our bitbucket first so what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to grab our repo name right there I don't know if it's case sensitive. I don't think that it's case sensitive. Now, one of the cool things about it is what you can do is you can clone repositories over to yours, but this is the name of your repository. So that's what I grabbed over there. I'm gonna say, I'm not gonna put a description on there. Let's say publish to see what happens. Slug in owner, you already have a repository with that name. Um, let's refresh this so I can create a repository from here. So let's just create a new repository like hello, get say publish slugs must be lowercase alphanumeric and may under continue blah, blah, blah. Okay. So this has to be lowercase. Hello, get, and I, I will put a description on here too. Creating a new repo so publish and now if we go back over to this and our bit bucket <clears throat> we'll go to source let's go back to the repository and let's refresh let's see it says 11 minutes ago <coughs> excuse me we had an initial commit 11 minutes ago and now let's see what happens there we go Hello, Git. Uh, oh, that's me. Oh, wait, wait, go back. Here's our hello, Git. And there we go. <coughs> so I needed to just go to the repository. Um, I'm not used to using, um, this particular version of Bitbucket, which is my, uh, which is why I seem a little lost right now, <clears throat> but if we go back to our Bitbucket, where's the main, yeah, let's go back here. There we go. Here's our repositories. And this is the one that I created when I first signed into it. And this is one I just created via Visual Studio. And so you can have multiple repositories for code, um, depending on how you organize it. And so you can see in here, and, and the cool thing about cloud-based stuff is you can click in here and you can see the code via the internet so i can see my code right here see that 
Okay. Seems pretty easy, right? Now, <clears throat> let's do the same thing over here for GitHub. I like using GitHub. It's a little easier to use, at least it is for me. So now um, let's make another change. So actually, before we go to the GitHub one, let's go back to this uh, um, to the spit bucket one here. So let's say I make a change to this code. I'm gonna add another console write line. Okay. Again, you notice we have a change here. Now I'm going to go ahead and I can, here's, here's one thing that you can do. Here's, again, using version control and using revision control gives you a lot of different tools at your disposal. So you'll notice that once this file changes, says pending edit, if you right click on this and you say view history, you can see all of the times that I've made a change to this one. Okay. <clears throat> Not only can you do that, you can compare your code. This is what I've got over here now, and this is what is on the repository. So you, you see, this is the cool thing about, we call this running a diff. Um, this is a cool thing about having it in source code is that if you make a mistake, you can always revert back to what you did, right? You can discard your changes and go back to what you had before and start off from scratch if you need to, okay? But that's only if um, you've not merged your changes up. You can always roll back stuff, right? That's the cool thing about doing version control stuff. So let's go ahead and commit these changes. Now, when you commit a change, it's going to be committed to your local repository first, okay? Added another right line. <clears throat> so I say commit. Now, I'll go back to my team explorer. I'm going to sync. You'll notice that I have an outgoing, what's called an outgoing commit. So, so think of this as a three-step process, right? You make a change, that's step one. You commit your change, that's step two. That commit is on your local machine. Step three is you have to push that change up into the repository that's over here in the cloud, okay? And that's what I'm gonna do now, push. And it's gonna push that chain, oh my gosh. <laughs> Lord. So I'm pushing that change up to the repository and boom, and now it's done. So now if I go back over here, it'll show that I made a change right there. Add another right line, add another right line. If I click on that, I can compare this as well to previous versions of code. That's what you use a repository for. Okay. Now let me go ahead and close out of this project. We're going to make another solution. We're going to do the GitHub one. <clears throat> another console app. We're going to call this hello GitHub. Create it. Same thing here. Let's go to Solution Explorer. Go up to Tools. Um, let's make sure it's in Source Control. Yep. We're okay there. And it says Add to Source Control. As soon as you do that, it's going to create a local Git repository for you. Boom. So if I click Team. 
Explorer here. Don't prompt the getting out of there. Um, <clears throat> I've got a Hello GitHub repository there. <clears throat> now, I'm going to push this repository up to GitHub. So click uh, your Tim Explorer, click your Manage Connections, and we're going to do this for GitHub. So we're going to create a repository. I need to change this first before I forget to do it because it's not on, it's on my B drive here. Repository, call it Hello GitHub, right? Um, I don't think that's right. I mean, I need to use this one here. Hello GitHub. Hmm. Let's do this. That's our repository. Oh, you know what? I don't need to do that. I already got one over there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead, let's go back, and we're gonna sync these changes to our repository here in GitHub. So we're gonna publish this to GitHub. And you'll notice that it fills everything out for you already. Okay. And I can also type in, this is a test git hub repo. When I say publish, it's already pushed it out there for me. So now if I go over to my GitHub account, I've got a repository in there, right there. And I click that and it shows me what I've got. <clears throat> now let's do the same thing we did before. And let's make a change to, let's make a change to our um, code here. We're gonna do the same thing here. Console, right line, add, oh, Hello, get hub. Okay, and let's be consistent. Let's add a comment line here, adding a comment line here as well. Save that. Notice we have a change here, just like with Bitbucket. We can view the history of this, right? We can do a diff on it like before and we are going to commit this change so <clears throat> to do that make sure your stuff is saved go to your team explorer click changes you'll see your code that's changed say added a comment line and a console right line to commit all boom it says commit create it locally secure to share your change with the server so if we go home and click on sync it'll show us that we've got you know a change that we need to push up to the server so think of it this way as well <clears throat> pushing is when you're pushing changes up into other code existing code your changes are getting written into the code base that's out on the server pulling is when you're pulling code down to sync your code up on your local machine with changes that other people have made to your code okay so let's go ahead and push this code up to github <clears throat> and it's gone ahead and pushed it up let's go back to our github account 
and if we click on our refresh we should see another change and then we see that we had another commit we see we have an added a comment line and a console write line we click that we see the change to the file that we had we click on the file you can see what it's currently at right now we're going to view the history <coughs> of changes okay and then you can also um let me go back you can also um uh, review changes that way as well and this is what a raw file looks like I mean, it's not necessary but um the other thing too is you can see um who's making these changes when the changes were made you know here you know all that stuff is available to you as well shows you it's updated a couple minutes ago click on that you know that kind of stuff you can look at your commits you know all that kind of stuff you can track the commits that were made and so on and so forth so that's the difference between um, doing it between those two it's they're both using git it's just you know one uses more authentication than the other right now said I was going to show you this briefly this DevOps <clears throat> so let me get signed in on my other DevOps account here so let me pause this okay so here's all here's my assured DevOps repos and I've had I've had these for quite some time here and you'll notice that I've got um, <clears throat> a ton of stuff out here that I've had for a while and you know this is basically what I you know I've had for a long while here um, let's see here what's a good one I can show this one here so if you click in here you can go through and you can see my code that I've created And I do have Git repositories over here too. <clears throat> but I was um, a little irritated with Microsoft because they, oh, the way they kind of did that and stuff. So it's the same stuff. But I prefer to use GitHub <clears throat> for myself. Um, I think Microsoft's a little late. They were a little late to the game. They tried it on their own and, you know, you can use Team Foundation Server or whatever, but, um, I mean, it's no different over here. You can create a Git account. You can do the same thing over on your, um, on your other repo over here as well. So, as you can see, I've connected to a ton of different repos over here, at least three, and I'm able to push code up, pull code down, that kind of stuff, right? Now, let me do one other thing too. Let's see if I can do this. I've never done this before, but I'm gonna see if I can do it on this video. Uh, let's do this in the GitHub one. So let me go to my Hello GitHub. And let me make a change to that code here. Let's see if I can do this. Yep. So here's the cool thing about this. Let's say I make I want to make a change this way, right? Now I've made these changes. I can commit these changes. Made, added, 
other into the file. And commit these changes. So now I've got code that no longer matches what I have over here. What I need to do over here is I need to pull down changes from my repository on the cloud to my repository here. So that means I need to sync these changes up from my master repository. So I'm gonna say pull and it pulls the change that I made right there down to my local repository. So now my local repository matches the cloud. So we're now we're one in the same, okay? And then another thing that you can do <clears throat> is if you've got other code out there, you can clone, let me go back to that, there, you can clone other repositories down from your cloud-based repository to your local machine, okay? So that's another thing that you can do, right? I'll do that right here. So on this main source repository, it closes your existing solution. So just be warned about that. Um, let's say that there is, this one is, um, <clears throat> this is set up um, to use um, Team Foundation here. But well, let's see if I can do it differently. Click source control. Do, 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 do. Cancel that. Yeah. And let's do it a different way. Go back. See, this is the problem with the Azure DevOps is that um, when you do stuff like this with Azure DevOps and you've had all of these different, you know, solutions via DevOps in Team Foundation, it's a pain in the rear to unlink that stuff and do it like everybody else is doing it. So it's, it's just kind of a pain in the rear. <clears throat> Let's see if I can do it this way. Um, Yeah, that's not gonna work. I won't bother um, with that, but I just want to give you an idea of what that looked like over here as well. Um, I mean, this one is a Git repository, but I've already got that code existing over there in Team Foundation Server. So there's an already an AES example over there. So anyway, um, this is an example of, of, you know, source control and it's, it's a great way to look at, um, it's a great way. It's a great way to, uh, track changes to code and to manage your code changes and to, um, do what you need to do and work as a team. This is a collaboration tool. And that's it. and it also helps protect your code. So, as always, as I close with this, um, <clears throat> everything that you've seen here, you can do on your own. Um, and I still might keep one of these out here, one of these particular. I'll probably use the GitHub one. Um, I'm not really familiar with this Bitbucket one that they use. Um, I've used Bitbucket at you know at jobs before, but um, but this is a it's a different one. Um, this is the cloud. I'm used to using the Bitbucket server. So um, we probably won't use the Bitbucket one. So I'll delete this particular Bitbucket account. But anyway, as always, what you can do is you can go out there, look in your, um, look at uh, different examples, Google. Um, we're going to learn and we're going to do some work using 
these repositories. So as always, be blessed, have a good one, and peace.